Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. Today, I am excited to bring a word to encourage those who are called in the office of an evangelist. Where are the fishers of men? Where are the fishers? Where are you? My friends, the Bible tells us very clearly that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was passing through Galilee and he saw two brothers named James and John. He said, come on, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. And we also find later that Jesus commissioned Peter and his brother, Andrew. And I want you to understand my friend, how you know that you have been called into this very important and powerful office that, that is necessary for the filling up of the church of Jesus Christ. But the first thing I want to tell you, my friend, is that many God say have fallen. Many of you have, have been derailed and God is saying, I need you to get back up because help is wanted. Heaven is saying, come on evangelist. I need you to come on and do my friend, do this. He's saying, I need the evangelist to come on and stir up that gift. Because there is a harvest, there is a people that is, is crying out and God is saying, I need the harvesters. I need those evangelists because you are powerful. You are potent. You are important in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to share with you, my friend, how you know that you have been called into this office. And I'm, I'm telling you, my friend, the scriptures clearly let us know that the evangelist is the one who calls men out of sin. They are the ones that is pointing those uh, who are lost in the world. They are what we call biblically Egypt. They're out there in the world. The evangelist comes along and the evangelist says, come on, I need you to Man, you got to stop sinning. You got to stop smoking. You got to stop sexing because God has given you the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And unless you repent from your sin, man, you ain't going to make it. See, that's what the evangelist does. He's out there telling everybody, you got to stop sinning and repent. And what I need you to understand is God is saying he doesn't want us to fish without the gifts. See, there are people who are trying to evangelize. They're trying to do the work of God without the precious Holy Ghost. See, the Bible says that when John was baptized in Jesus, that the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. My friend, you and I cannot work these fields without the help of our comforter. So before one is released to really do public ministry, because some evangelists, they are very public, but yet what God is saying is that many of us, we will not do the work of an evangelist privately. See, heaven is speaking to private evangelism because many people, my friend, are so busy trying to get to platforms that they are passing over all of these broken people. And God is saying that Jesus, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 10, Jesus went about doing good everywhere he went. And that's what evangelists do. They go about doing good good. But if you are not equipped with the Holy Spirit, if you have not taken time to make sure that your lamp is full, my friend, you got to make sure you're filled with Holy Spirit. And this is how we know, because there's a desire to prophesy. There's a desire to know words of knowledge, words of wisdom. You want to be able to see God manifest healings. You want to see God do miracles because my friend, those gifts is like the worm on your fishing rod. Watch this now. Here's the worm, but the worm has hooks in it because once we are able, follow me, my friend, 
The Bible tells us a story where Jesus met this woman at the well. Jesus was tired and he was sitting on top of Jacob's well and the Samaritan woman came and the word tells us that Jesus spoke to her by the word of knowledge. He said, go get your husband. My friend, that was a manifestation of the gifts of Holy Spirit. But watch this, my friend. In many cases, the evangelist is using, when, when we are connected properly, we have taken time to learn of the comforter. We have taken time to learn his voice, to learn the unction of God, to learn the quickening of God, to, to, to know the burden. And I don't mean that in a negative sense, but a burden is weight that, that you could come around a stranger and immediately you feel that unction. You feel that weight that I must evangelize them. I must give them the good news. I must exhort them. I must give them a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. You're waiting. The evangelist is using the hook, what, what the fisher of man is using to hook them is the word repent. If you attempt to fish for men and you do not use the proper line and hook, you are catching people's attention and you may stroke the ego, but my friend, without repentance, the work of the evangelist is in vain because once they may bite on a compliment, come on, because he that wins souls is wise. We're, we're looking at how we're doing, what we're doing. Every person is different. When that hook, once they bite down on, how you doing? You're just saying, how you doing to them? Keeping it simple. You may say, wow, I really love your hair. Your hair looks nice. Not flattery, but you're finding a way to engage. You, you may even say, you know, do you shop here a lot? You're looking for ways to open up conversation. But the hook that must be snatched toward man, towards man, in that heart, is repent. Follow me. The Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, it was Peter that stood up and preached. And the Bible says they were pricked in their heart. It's just like a fishing hook, my friend. In other words, when you pricked, something bothers you, something done got in. And if the evangelist does not tell people about hell, that unless you repent and turn from your sin, you will not get in heaven. You will be lost forever. This is the worm on the rod, my friend, is repent. Now follow me. Because once the evangelist understands, because for some reason, people seem to think that evangelists are just these mild, you know, hey, how you doing? You know Jesus. No, my friend, the evangelist must know how to engage because you have four different types of people, my friend, that you will encounter. Let me give you four of them. And remember, my friend, we have five gifts to the body of Christ, to the perfecting of gifts, and to calling of men back to, to, to our God. You have the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, according to Ephesians chapter 4. The evangelists, watch this now, we got to understand. True apostles who are missionaries set up churches. Prophets stir up churches. They stir up the body. Evangelists fill it up. Pastors build them up. And teachers help to grow them up. And we know we refer to man and Jesus did as sheep. So in order to fill up a sheepfold, you need the evangelist because they are out there in those fields working. But my friend, if you don't understand that at any given time, you can run into all different types of people. This is why the Bible says that Jesus went about doing good. 
See, when you're, when you're out doing good, that means that you have a word in and out of season because you're going to encounter four types. You're going to encounter those who need salvation. They need their sins forgiven. They need to repent. You're going to find those who need restoration. This is the backslidden Christian. You're going to find those who simply need comfort. And that's where the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, all of these gifts of the spirit, which are vitally important, my friend, we can't be out in these fields without the gifts because we don't know who needs what, but the Holy Spirit knows. So the evangelist also has to deal with the blind and the people that's doing what? Sleeping. You're going to deal with a lot of people who do not want to be disturbed. They got blinders on. And because, my friend, the evangelist is one to go about like our Lord and Savior doing good, if you don't understand, the word of God tells us that some water, some plant, when a person is planting, my friend, they're digging. See, you cannot plant the seed of faith as an evangelist. You cannot plant the gospel of Christ in the heart of man. If you leave out the cross, if you leave out repentance, if you leave out, if you do not come to God, you're going to perish. And that's why you got to understand that some water and some is planting. And when a person's planting, they got to dig because you cannot, my friend, you cannot just put seed right there on, on topical soil. You have to drive it in. You have to make a way. You got to till it. You got to move dirt around. Follow me. Because some evangelists do not understand the disposition that is also necessary for your position. The Bible says that the word of God is like a hammer that break it up. Rock. What is the rock? It is stony hearts. So if the evangelist does not understand that some of the people you're going to encounter got that hard heart and that you are sometimes going to find yourself a little bit confrontational because you are driving that seed down into stony hearts, you are tilling their ground. And therefore, my friend, there may be some serious confrontation and rebuke. And what God is saying is that if you don't understand that the truth, it will sh cut them like a knife and you may leave some people's presence. And it happens all the time, my friend, because there's so much darkness. You will leave their presence and that person is hot and angry. They're angry. But God is saying when you deal with people who have stony hearts, they're backslidden or they are blind by religion. My friends, sometimes you got to let that hammer drop. You got to let it drop and you have to do it. And knowing that your intention, my friend, is to save that soul. Some have to be snatched out. How are they snatched? Through rebuke. And if you have not uh, watched my video, the spirit of the Lord gave us uh, instruction and exhortation on the art of rebuke. It is necessary for the evangelist to work these fields. My friend, once the fish are caught, once fish are caught, my friend, what comes next? They have to be scaled and scaling fish, my friend. This is vigorous. This is work, my friend. That thing, you got to, it takes. And this is why you must understand if you're a pastor, if you're a prophet, it doesn't matter what office, we all play a part in scaling these fish. Because guess what, my friend? 
when rebuke and correction is not present with the evangelists, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, and the teachers, all five of these gifts. If we are not understanding the necessity for rebuke, those fish will never be scaled. You'll let them walk right around in your churches in nakedness. You'll see the, the young boys with their pants sagging and all their earrings and all their vanity. You see the preacher up on the uh, platform. He got two earrings in his ears. He got on his muscle shirts, flesh everywhere, tight jeans. Oh, that's someone needs scaled and thrown back. He need to be thrown back over into production. We got to produce. We got to cut that thing up and get him processed. And so when we love our brethren, the truth, it will cut you. And my friend, here are three ways that you know that you are called into the office of an evangelist appointed by the Holy Ghost. Not man, the Holy Ghost. Here are three ways that you know straight off the out the gate. You cannot help but tell your testimony. You is always telling somebody how Jesus saved your soul. Your testimony is not that I was a drunk, I was a prostitute. That's not your ultimate position of your testimony. Your testimony is Jesus saved me and converted my soul, my friend. And he wants to do the same for you. You can't help but tell it. You are pushing him towards the cross, not your personal sin. You're, you're, you're diverting that attention through that testimony to the cross. Number two, it is so easy. You do not meet strangers. Evangelists have a gift. They, they, they don't meet strangers. They're always talking to everybody. <laughs> They like little social, you know, <laughs> evangelists are like social butterflies. They get around. <laughs> God gave them that gift. They love people and they, you are constantly concerned about people's soul. You eat, my friend, you eat and you sleep this. This is your meat. This is just like Jesus said in Matthew, I believe it's uh, chapter four, verse 34. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of my father and to finish the work. That evangelist, what you're, it's the air you breathe. I mean, you, 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 you eat and sleep strategies. You're constantly thinking, how are you going to do this thing? How are you going to say what? You're, you're looking for creative ways to evangelize everybody. You, I mean, this is the air you breathe, my friend. Number three, that evangelist is married to the cross. Now, I need you to hear me because we have a lot of people who have been misled. They're misquoting. They have a, literally mutilated Matthew 18 and 18 where we find that Jesus told Peter after he received the revelation of Christ, he said, I'm going to give you keys to the kingdom and whatever you bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose in the earth shall be loosed. When we keep Matthew 18 in its context, Peter, he said, upon this rock, Upon this revelation of who I am, Peter, I'm going to build my church. We find in the book of Acts, this is so powerful, my friend. Matthew 16, 19, or I believe, yeah, Matthew also, Matthew 16 and 19. Jesus said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on the earth. Now, follow me very closely, my friend, because the evangelist does have a key. These, the, these keys are distributed by Jesus because the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter four, before he ascended, he descended to the lower parts of the earth. And the evangelist is holding a key. The key is the saying that he gave Peter, which was revealed knowledge from, it came from God, but now Jesus, who was the Lord over his harvest, gave him the authorization on Pentecost Peter took that key, the Christ, and turned that key and 3,000 souls was loosed and added to the ecclesia, meaning the church of Jesus Christ. He used that key on the day of Pentecost. 
And my friend, when people are um, constantly talking about they're binding and they're loosing their money, houses, cars, their new husband, their kids from crack addiction. No, my friend, you go preach the gospel and they could get loosed. If you preach that if you don't turn, the old folks used to say, if you don't turn, you gonna burn. If you do not repent, you're gonna perish. My friend, that is how you turn this key. This authority, this authorization from heaven is the cross. I tell you this, my friend, and I need you to hear me. If you do not preach repentance, Jesus did not send you. You must Turn that key towards that cross, which unlocks the conviction because conviction can only come when there is conviction. When that person, they feel, what must I do? I got to get my life right. Why? Because the evangelist is fishing for men with those keys. Oh, my friend, they shall be loosed. When you warn them that the wages, the wages of their sin is death. The payment for sin is death. And unless the evangelist understands what you're working with, this is not for the faint in heart. This is a branch of the kingdom of God, just, the, just like the United States Army. Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. The evangelist office is so important. But if you don't understand that you may water at times, you may be planting at times. But here, there, a little here, a little there, at the end of the day, what God is after, my friend, he wants them to know the answer. Is their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? The evangelist wants to know, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? And that evangelist also is looking for that backslider because if their name has been blotted out, we still strive, no matter what branch of ministry, to make sure that those we encounter, that they are in right standing, they're in good standing with God. My friend, if you've been called into this precious office, the power of the evangelist, the fisher of men is the cross. And when you don't preach repentance to turn from sin, you bind them. The key to loose them is the cross. The blood of Jesus. That is the power of the evangelist and the person of Christ. Your, your devotion to God, your quiet time with God. My friend, let me give you very quickly three things that will harm the evangelist that will move you from your potency and that power, which is the cross, because the power of God is the cross. It's not casting out devils, my friend. It's not speaking in tongues. It's not the gifts of the spirit. It's the cross. Because unless you unlock that cross and put their focus there, everything else, it doesn't matter, my friend. It's the cross. Follow me now. Here are six things that you've got to, to, to take a look at, my friend, that wherever you go, when you are constantly desiring to do good, you're leaving a nice scent of the cross. Just like good perfume, you leaving that scent of the blood-stained banner of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm giving you six things to keep the evangelist robust. Number one, the evangelist must stay in a posture of repentance. That means you are constant, constantly walking circumspectly before God, 
prayer. And remember the model before the high priest could come in to the Holy of Holies, they had to stop at the lava laver of brass. My friend, that's repentance. Get clean, stay clean. My friend, don't let nothing get past your gates. My friend, guard your gates with all diligence. Number two, keep your awe. Keep that childlike disposition. Lord, I love you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I, I am feeling kind of scared to say something to her. But God, I know it's right. Give me the boldness. Give me holy boldness to get past my fear. Because this lady, I know she she needs you. Amen? You're childlike. You're relying on the, 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 the Holy Spirit who will quicken us. He will give us that unction to function. And then we got to we gotta follow through. Amen? Number three, seek to utilize your spiritual gifts. Actually, they're the Holy Spirit's gifts. But be yielded, just like Isaiah in the king's court. You just sitting and you waiting, saying, speak, Lord, because your servant, I'm listening. So, so, so desire prophecy, desire words of wisdom and knowledge and healing and miracles. You ask. God said, now... Hmm. If you men, mortal men, know how to give good gifts, how much more shall your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit when you ask? He said, if you ask him for bread, would I give you a rock? Would I give you a stone? God said, come on and ask me. Because some of you, you're afraid of Holy Spirit. You're afraid to, 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 to learn his voice, to learn that he's a person. He's real, my friend. And God is saying, if you ask, seek, and knock, you're going to get everything you're asking for. Because these are good things, my friend. These are, these are our weapons. This is what we need, my friend, to work the fields of men. Number four, never play the victim when you are in combat. Because, my friend, some people just going to be like, <laughs> y'all know they get their name. Don't worry about them. You got to be able to handle rejection. You got to be able to handle, my friend. If you play the victim and you know that you're trying to give them the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that all this walk in this planet, if they do not repent, they're going to perish. They are condemned. This is why Jesus said, I don't come to condemn them. I'm coming to save them. <laughs> so, so when you have your little combat net, don't cry over no spilled milk. Just know you trying to do good everywhere you go. Amen. So never play the victim, my friend. Don't do that. Number five, thanksgiving and prayer. Remember, I told you, my friends, we've been saying this. I've been saying this throughout these teachings because this is what the Lord said. Prayer and praise is your weapon. And when the evangelist, because the evangelist is constantly engaging everywhere he or she goes, when you drop your weapon, remember now, when you go into the, a branch of the United States uh, uh, Armed Forces, you got to go through boot camp. And the thing they teach you that you keep with you at all times in combat is your M16. Prayer and thanksgiving, my friend, and keep an attitude of gratitude. I don't care. Everybody that has been good to you, everybody that has done good by you, always say thank you. Never take people for granted, evangelists. Don't do it, my friend. And because, see, when we do people that way, that's because we do God that way. God say, enter my courts with praise and thanksgiving. Keep a new song on your heart. That leads me to the most important weapon, I'm telling you, of the evangelist and all the ministry gifts. Praise. It's like music. It's like music in God's ears. Never underestimate because it was that man named Paul and that man named Silas who was in the uh, Ephesian jailhouse singing and praising our God that it pleased him so much that he loosed those chains. Glory to God. He sent an angel. He's like, hmm, they ain't sitting up. I bind you, devil. I loose myself. I loose these chains. I bind you, devil. No, Paul and Silas was in the prison. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you imagine? Praise the Lord. Come on, Silas. Praise the Lord, everybody. Mm. Praise the Lord. Now listen, my friend. Woo-hoo! I'm feeling that. Woo-hoo! See, you can't work these fields and you ain't no worshiper, my friend. When you lose your worship, worship, you lose your power. You can't work the fields without the joy of the Lord. 
And it comes when you at his gates singing and honoring his goodness and his power and his majesty. It's the secret weapon of all ministry gifts. It is the weapon called praise. My God in heaven, thank you. And you must understand, my friend, many people are sitting up. Remember what I said in the teaching? The, the dangers of this false movement of binding and loosening. And I decree and I declare they shooting their little toy guns. Let me tell you, my friend, the most powerful place is rest. That is the most powerful posture of the worker of God is rest. Because as long as you are fighting, you can't hear. And as long as you are, mm -mm, you cannot hear, my friend. You cannot advance. You cannot grow in faith to faith and glory to glory because you are always disturbed. That's what your enemy wants you to do is to keep fighting a fight you can't win, my friend. We win when we rest. When we just sit back and say, Lord, I love you. In the midst of the pain and the confusion, Lord, I lift your name on high. You are worthy. I better stop y'all. Cause now I ain't got no singing voice, but huh? when we love him, we worship him. So my friend, when you claim that you being attacked, go get in your secret place. Go get in that quiet space and lift praise up to our God. Number six, last but not least, I said it almost like a number four. Do not take rejection personal. When you work these fields, my friend, oh, you go have all types of drama. And remember, my friend, last but not least, use creativity, my friend. You, you, you may run into brothers and sisters who's going through pain. Some of them might be on your job. Send them a nice note card. I keep note cards, my friend. Send them something beautiful. Send them, if you can find little monies that's extra in your budget, go purchase beautiful things. These are my courage key rings. I evangelize with these. They come in all kinds of colors. Buy yourself creative things. Keep little things that will inspire them. This is a piece of wood. It's so beautiful. It says faith makes all things possible. And this goes like on your refrigerator. So when you have extra money, buy little things. So when you're out and you're evangelizing, I give this to prophets. I give this to people who are called in that office because prophets, my friend, hmm, they, they have such a hard job because we're digging around so much tradition and garbage, my friend, so that 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 ego, they can soar alone. They can get high. They see and they have binocular vision and they have keen hearing. So that prophet, we definitely want to keep the prophets encouraged because they are, it, this is the hour of the prophet right now. In 2016, headed towards 2017, it's the hour of the prophets because much correction and reformation, reformation means to turn something, to change it, to take it back to its regular state, to alterate. It is necessary for this hour. What am I saying, my friend? Keep little things with you so you can exhort your brethren. I also make, these are my uh, uh, floral journal ink pens. I try to find the most beautiful premium flowers I can find and I hand make these. I give these to people who are downcast to the women. If they are going through depression, they're just going through the fire. And I give them to them. I spray them. I make them smell good. And then I tell them, look, when you is feeling some kind of way, you go and you write God a love letter. Get that stuff out. Go talk to God. Write it down. Mm. I love you, my friend. Be creative. I also use these, my friend, when I'm in the mission field. I sometimes, I give a pack of these. These are courage. This, this is the word courage. And on the back, it tells you what it means. Courage is not absent fear. It is denying its power to control you. No fear no limits. So I'll package these. I'll tell them, I want you to choose eight people. This is a pack of eight. So we got to be creative, my friend. Find creative ways to help the brethren get their mind off of them and put it on their brethren, their fellow man. So the evangelist wants to engage in all of these ways. Be creative. If you do poetry, write notes, follow up, ask, could you get their address? I do it all the time and send them little words of encouragement every now and then. Let the Barnabas rise in you. Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas was the encourager. Come on, evangelist. It's time to rock and roll. Hey, for our Lord. So until the next time, evangelist, keep calm and carry on. I love you, my friend. 
Till next time.